Samantha Ray's heels clicked against the polished marble floor of the funeral home, each step an echo of the hollow ache in her chest. Black silk clung to her curves, a shield against the pitying stares and whispered condolences of the assembled mourners. She paused before her mother's casket, fingers tightening around the single white rose in her hand. Esmeralda Ray looked serene in eternal slumber. Her chestnut hair fanned out against the satin pillow, masking the ugly bruises Samantha knew martyr throw throat beneath the high lace collar. Oh, Mom, Samantha whispered, vision blurring with unshed tears. I'm so sorry. I should have been here. But she hadn't been. She'd been thousands of miles away, arguing a high-profile case while her mother wasted away in this godforsaken town, trapped in a loveless marriage to a man who'd slowly suffocated her spirit. A large hand landed on Samantha's shoulder, startling her out of her reverie. She stiffened, the cloying scent of peppermint and tobacco making her stomach turn. Tears don't bring back the dead girl. Her stepfather's voice was a gravel-rough rasp against her ear. Luther Bishop squeezed her shoulder, and she fought the urge to shake him off. His touch hadn't always repulsed her. Once, in the haze of grief after her father's death, she'd believed his comfort genuine. She'd only been sixteen when Esmeralda married Luther, desperate for security and stability for her daughter. Samantha had bristled at the sudden intrusion of a new authority figure, but Luther had been patient, kind even. He praised her quick wit, encouraged her budding interest in law. Dottie. Under his attentions, she'd bloomed like a moonflower, unfurling secret petals in the dark. Until the night it all shattered. The night she stumbled upon Luther and his son Marcus, her stepbrother, arguing in harsh whispers over a stack of papers. Bank account statements showing large transfers to offshore accounts. Transfers that could only mean one thing. Her mother's thriving real estate business was being bled dry. When they caught her listening, Luther's eyes had shuttered, calculation sweeping away warmth. This is a private matter, Samantha. Go on up to bed now. But she'd stood her ground, righteous fury burning through her. Private? You're stealing from my mother. How could you? She loves you. Love? Luther scoffed. Love is for fools and storybooks. Your mother loves what I can give her, status, security. And as long as I keep providing those things, she'll never ask where the money goes. Samantha reeled as if slapped. In an instant, the facade crumbled. The doting husband, the caring father figure. Beneath it lay a grasping, greedy schemer. I'll tell her, Samantha whispered. I'll tell her everything. Luther just smiled, cold and pitying. Oh, sweetheart, who do you think she'll believe? The husband who saved her from ruin, or the resentful daughter who can't stand to share her mother's attention? Hot tears stung Samantha's eyes. She looked desperately to Marcus, praying she'd see some flicker of remorse, of brotherly solidarity. But her stepbrother just smirked, arms crossed over his broad chest. You heard dad. Run along before you make things worse for yourself. Something shattered in Samantha that night, some fragile hope that this new family could fill the void left by her father's death. In its place, rose steel-spined determination. She would not let them break her, would not let them crush her mother's spirit by increments. The next morning, she announced her intention to graduate early and accept a scholarship to Georgetown. Esmeralda had wept. Luther's brows lowered in suspicion, but Samantha held fast to her purpose. She would become a lawyer, amass money, an influence of her own. And one day, she'd return to set things right. But she'd waited too long. Let cases and accolades consume her while her mother withered on the vine. And now, staring down at Esmeralda's waxen face, regret burnt like acid in her throat. I know losing Esmeralda was a terrible shock, Luther murmured false sympathy dripping from every word. But you have to be strong now. It's what she would have wanted. Samantha's fingers clenched around the rose's stem, thorns biting into her palm. Shock. As if her mother's death had been some tragic accident and not the result of years of isolation and psychological abuse. Indeed, it was a shock to learn my healthy 40-year-old mother apparently tripped down a flight of stairs alone in an empty house.
Samantha turned to face Luther, green eyes hard as agates. Especially since her bedroom was downstairs. Luther's expression remained calculatedly somber, but Samantha caught the telltale flicker of fear in his eyes. Good. Let him squirm. Grief can play tricks on the mind, he said evenly. Perhaps this is a conversation best had after you've had some rest west. I'm not going anywhere. Samantha cut him off, voice low and fierce. Not until I find out what really happened to my mother. And if you had anything to do with it. She let the unspoken threat hang in the air between them, sharp as a blade. Luther's face reddened, meaty hands curling into fists at his sides. But he didn't dare cause a scene here amidst the cream of small-town society gathered to pay their respects. Respect? Ought that? The very word curdled on Samantha's tongue. None of them had respected Esmeralda, seen the vivacious woman withering in a gilded cage. They'd gossiped and judged, cast sidelong glances at the age gap between her and Luther, the way she'd snatched him up after her first husband's tragic end. No more. Samantha wouldn't let her mother's memory be tarnished by small minds and poisoned hearts. She would uncover the truth, no matter the cost. With a final glare at Luther, she turned on her heel, the rose tumbling from her hand to lay splayed across the gray carpet like spilled blood. She had work to do. Samantha strode into the weak sunlight, only to collide with a tall figure loitering near the funeral home steps. Strong hands gripped her shoulders, and a familiar scent enveloped her. Sandalwood leather, a hint of motor oil. Easy there, Sammy. That gruff voice, still thick with a southern drawl, sent a cascade of memories washing over her. Late summer nights sneaking out to a hidden swimming hole, the rumble of a pickup truck beneath her thighs, calloused hands sliding reverently over sweat-slicked skin. She looked up into whiskey-brown eyes, eyes she'd once sworn held galaxies. Declan. Dot. I didn't expect to see you here. Declan Hawthorne rubbed the back of his neck, her mother's death clearly straining the rules of estranged daughter visits. Of course I'd be here. Esme. She was like a second mama to me growing up. Least I could do is pay my respects. Samantha looked away, blinking back tears. Declan had always been able to strip her defenses with a few honeyed words. That's why she'd left him behind all those years ago, along with the rest of this backwater. But seeing him now, handsome as ever in a black button down and worn jeans, the old longing surged back fiercer than ever. He'd been her rock, her port in a storm. Maybe the only one in town who'd truly seen her mother's gifts, cherished them. I failed her deck, Samantha confessed, hating the quaver in her voice. I knew Luther was bad news from the start. I should have found a way to get her out, should have. Hey, none of that. Declan tipped her chin up, calloused thumb brushing away an escaped tear. You couldn't have known it would come to this. And even if you had, that stubborn streak is a Ray family trait. Esme wouldn't have walked away just on your say-so. A choked laugh burst from Samantha's lips. No, well, no, she wouldn't have. She swallowed hard. But I still have to try to make it right. Starting with finding out how she really died. Declan's brows lowered. You think Luther was involved? It wasn't a question. Samantha nodded grimly. He wanted her money, her land. Killing her would be the quickest way to get it. Especially now with the new development deal on the line. The old water's property sale, Declan said, realization dawning. Luther's been angling to get his hands on that for years. And with Esme gone, he'll have the funds to close the deal, no questions asked. White-hot rage sluiced through Samantha's veins. I won't let him use my mother's death to line his pockets. Not while her killer walks free. Declan gripped her hands, his touch searing even through the lace of her gloves. I'm with you, Sammy. Whatever you need, I'm your man. Samantha's heart stumbled. Once, she would have given anything to hear him say those words, pledge himself to her. But too much had changed. Too many secrets and years stretched between them. Declan, I can't ask you to why. You're not asking. I'm offering. His gaze locked on hers, unwavering. 
This is my home too. These people, this land, it matters to me. S may mattered to me. His Adam's apple bobbed as he swallowed. You matter to me. Longing and grief, tangled in Samantha's chest, thick as kudzu. Hesitantly, she twined her fingers with his, marveling at the perfect fit, unchanged after all these years. Maybe some things were meant to endure. Maybe even a love she'd once thought lost forever. Okay, she breathed. Okay, we do this together. Declan's smile ignited a flicker of hope in the ashes of her heart. He raised their joined hands to his lips in a courtly gesture that would have been ridiculous if it didn't make her ache. Together, he vowed. Until justice is served and your mama can rest easy. The sun hung low over the mountains, painting the sky in bruised purples and bloody oranges, as Samantha guided her rental car down the winding lane to her family home. Declan sat silent in the passenger seat, his presence both a comfort and a distraction. They hadn't spoken since leaving the funeral, both lost in memories of the woman they'd loved. For Samantha, the grief was a living thing, coiled in her chest like a snake, ready to strike at the slightest provocation. She welcomed the pain, used it to stoke the embers of her rage. She would need that fire in the battles to come. As the sprawling Victorian came into view, Samantha's hands tightened on the steering wheel. As Merelda had loved this house, poured her heart into restoring every clapboard and gable. To think of Luther defiling it with his schemes and betrayals. You sure you're ready for this? Declan's voice, low and steady, cut through the red haze of her thoughts. We can take a beat. Come back in the morning when you're rested. Samantha shook her head, red curls dancing around her shoulders. I won't give him the satisfaction of seeing me weak. He doesn't get to keep his secrets. Not anymore. She parked next to Luther's gleaming black Cadillac, the irony of the hearse-like vehicle not lost on her. Let him try to hide behind his veneer of wealth and respectability. She would tear it all down brick by gilded brick. The house was dark as they mounted the porch steps, the air heavy with the scent of wilting lilies left over from the wake. It turned Samantha's stomach, cloying and funereal. She wanted to rip them down, burn the six sweet blossoms until nothing remained but ash. Declan's hand on the small of her back steadied her as she fumbled for her keys, the childhood talisman feeling strange and heavy in her grasp. When was the last time she'd let herself into this house? The night she'd left for college, eyes swollen with tears and heart shards. The key clicked in the lock and the door swung open, hinges groaning a mournful welcome. Samantha stepped over the threshold, bracing for a barrage of memories. But the entrance hall was cold and sterile, all traces of her mother's warmth and laughter leached away. Only one photograph remained on the wall, a formal portrait from Luther and Esmeralda's wedding day. They smiled woodenly at the camera, his arm a vice around her waist, her eyes shuttered and unreadable. Violet scorched the back of Samantha's throat. It was all a sham, a loveless charade played out for an audience of one. He couldn't wait to erase her, she bit out, fingernails cutting into her palms. Couldn't even wait until she was in the ground. Declan made a soothing noise, his hand finding hers in the gloom. He can redecorate all he wants. Won't change what Esme meant to people, the lives she touched. Samantha's eyes burned, but she wouldn't let the tears fall. Not yet. Not until she'd looked the man who'd destroyed her mother in the eye and made him pay. She started up the stairs, blood thrumming a war beat in her ears. Luther's study was on the second floor, a sanctum of scotch fumes and cigar smoke she'd always been forbidden from entering. The secrets it held might be her only chance at unlocking the truth. The door was ajar, lamplight spilling across the Persian rug. Heart in her throat, Samantha pushed it open, stealing herself for the devil's lair. But the room was empty. Luther's high back chair overturned as if he'd left in a hurry. Papers were strewn across the mahogany desk, the smoky sweet stench of his favorite bourbon hanging cloyingly in the air. Looks like he didn't stick around for a nightcap. Declan muttered, chewing a crystal tumbler on its side, amber liquid seeping into the carpet. Samantha barely heard him, her gaze fixed on an opened legal document in the center of the blotter. With shaking hands, she snatched it up, a tide of red rising before her eyes as she read. That son of a bitch, she whispered. 
he changed the will, gave himself sole ownership of her assets, including the rights to the water's sale. The paper crumpled in her fist, rage and disgust churning in her gut. It was all there in legalese black and white, her mother's death nothing more than a means to an end. Luther would be a very rich man, all thanks to his dead wife. Mom updated her will right before she died. Samantha threw the document down as if it burned. She'd changed it to leave a trust for a women's crisis charity. One last act of defiance. She shook her head, throat closing around a bitter laugh. But Luther had his pet judge amend it back. Made it so the ink was barely dry on her coffin before he got what he wanted. Bastard. Declan looked as if he wanted to put his fist through a wall, and part of Samantha wished he would. Anything to shatter the suffocating weight of injustice pressing down on them. But they needed to be smart, strategic. Samantha forced herself to take a steadying breath, the scent of her mother's perfume still clinging to the air spurring her on. There has to be something here we can use against him, she said firmly. He's arrogant. Reckless. He would have left a trail and we're going to find it. Declan squeezed her shoulder, pride and shared purpose, burning in his whiskey eyes. Then let's get to work, sweetheart. They tore through the study like twin cyclones, a dance they'd perfected back in their high school days when searching for a place to steal a forbidden kiss. But this was no game, no teenage ploy. The stakes were life and death, and Samantha wouldn't rest until she held all the aces. Hours passed, marked only by the changing quality of the light and the crick in Samantha's neck. Just as despair began to set in, Declan made a noise of triumph, brandishing a sheaf of papers from the back of a filing drawer. Got something, he said, voice tight with excitement. Bank statements dating back months. Large withdrawals, way more than Esme's business should have been generating. Samantha's heart kicked against her ribs as she scanned the figures. He was siphoning funds, funneling them into offshore accounts. Her fist clenched, crumpling the papers. Lying, thieving, snake. He was bleeding her dry. But embezzlement, however morally repugnant, was a far cry from murder. They needed something definitive, irrefutable. Something to prove Luther's hands were red with more than just ink. The withdrawal stopped abruptly three weeks ago, Declan murmured, tracing a blunt finger down the statements. Right around when... He swallowed hard. When Esme passed, because he didn't need to hide the money anymore, Samantha realized grimly. With her gone, he had unrestricted access. No more reason for such a clumsy paper trail. Better for the grieving husband's image, Declan agreed darkly. A lead weight settled in Samantha's stomach. Every road circled back to Esmeralda's death, the mysterious accident that gave Luther everything he'd spent years coveting. No? Thou, not accident. Her mother was too poised, too careful to meet such an ignominious end. And if her suspicions about Luther's character held true, it was him, Deck, she whispered, nausea rising in her throat. He killed her. I know he did. Declan went still, a muscle ticking in his jaw. When he spoke, his voice vibrated with barely leashed violence. If that's true, if he laid a hand on Esme, he looked up at her, eyes burning like backwoods whiskey, potent and unfiltered. I'll kill him myself. A shudder rippled through Samantha, dark and delicious. Part of her, the wounded little girl who'd watched her mother fade like a bruised magnolia, longed to let him. To stand back and watch as Declan tore Luther apart with the brutal efficiency of the barrack knuckle fighter he'd once been but that would make them no better than the monster who'd stolen Esmeralda's light. They had to do this the right way, the legal way, or else her mother's ghost would never know peace. We need proof, Samantha said, squaring her shoulders beneath the weight of her blazer. Physical evidence tying him to her death. Her eyes caught on the papers, a sick certainty unfurling in her chest. There must be something in his financials, some clue we're missing. A floorboard creaked in the hall, snapping her head up like a startled dew. Luther's heavy tread, unmistakable after years of listening for it with dread. He was back. And if he found them here, 
elbow deep in his filthy secrets. Samantha, Luther's voice was muffled by the door, deceptively pleasant. A snake in the grass poised to strike. I thought I heard voices up here. What are you doing in my study? Samantha's heart lodged in her throat, but she kept her tone even as she called out, just looking for some of mom's things to take back to the city. Mementos, you know? A considering pause. Then, silkily, of course. Perhaps I can help you look. The doorknob rattled, Luther's shadow falling across the gap beneath the door. Samantha shot Declan a wild-eyed look, pulse hammering a hummingbird beat in her veins. If Luther saw him here, saw the damning papers scattered across his desk. Declan was already moving, banking around the desk with preternatural speed. He caught Samantha around the waist, pushing her behind him even as he shifted to block the incriminating documents from view. She clutched the back of his shirt, breathing in the familiar scent of him, letting it ground her. They'd been in countless scrapes together as kids, always managing to save each other's skins at the last minute. She prayed this time would be no different. The study door swung open, and Luther filled the frame, meaty shoulders straining the seams of his gray suit. His eyes swept the room, narrowing at the sight of Declan, broad and immovable as a mountain. Well now, Luther drawled, wolfish grin not quite reaching his eyes. Isn't this cozy? The high school sweethearts, reunited at last. Declan said nothing, but Samantha felt the tension thrumming through him, taut as a live wire. He'd never liked Luther, never trusted the older man's unctuous charm or the proprietary way he'd looked at Esmeralda. If he'd known then what they knew now. What do you want, Luther? Samantha stepped out from behind Declan, keeping her voice carefully neutral. I thought you'd be eager to get back to playing the wounded widower. Isn't there a reporter waiting to hear you extol mom's virtues? Something ugly rippled across Luther's face, there and gone in a flash. When he spoke, his tone was larded with false sympathy. Now, Samantha, I know you're hurting. We all are. But lashing out won't bring your mother back. No, it won't. Samantha met his gaze unflinchingly, letting him see the steel beneath the silk. But finding out what really happened to her just might let her rest in peace. Luther's mouth thinned, a nerve ticking in his cheek. I thought I made myself clear at the service. Esmeralda's death, while tragic, was an accident. There's no mystery to solve. Of course not, Declan cut in, his drawl slow and dangerous. Just a woman in the prime of her life, dead at the bottom of the stairs. Happens every day, right? Fury sparked in Luther's muddy eyes, his fists curling at his sides. Samantha could practically see him calculating the risks of throwing a punch, asserting his dominance over the younger man. But he wasn't a fool. Declan had at least 40 pounds of muscle on him and a reputation for scrapping that stretched back to the cradle. I can see you're both overwrought, Luther bit out. Looking for someone to blame in your grief but I won't stand here and listen to baseless accusations. He drew himself up, straightening his tie with a sharp jerk. Esmeralda was my wife. I loved her more than life itself. Samantha's heart clenched, an icy fist squeezing the breath from her lungs. Loved her. As if love could be measured in bruises and isolation, a gilded cage with a forever lock. You never loved her, she whispered. You used her drained her dry until there was nothing left but a husk. Her voice shook, tears scalding the backs of her eyes, but she wouldn't let them fall. Not in front of him. And when she finally found the strength to break free, to take back her life, you couldn't stand it. Could you? Could. Luther's face went slack, surprise and fear warring across his blunt features. For a moment, the mask slipped revealing the rot festering beneath. I don't know what you're talking about, he blustered. Esmeralda was happy. We were happy. Until you showed up, poisoning her mind with your selfish demands. I think you'd better stop talking now. Declan's voice was soft, but lethally edged. He took a step forward, placing himself bodily between Samantha and her stepfather. Before you say something we'll all regret. Luther's mouth snapped shut color high in his cheeks. He looked from Declan to Samantha, 
a vein throbbing at his temple. This isn't over, he gritted out. I won't let you slander my good name, sully your mother's memory with these, these filthy lies. He jabbed a finger at Samantha, eyes wild. You think you're so high and mighty, so much better than the rest of us. But I know what you are. Just a scared little girl, desperate for daddy's attention. Samantha reeled back as if slapped, bile searing her throat. How dare he? How dare he twist her love for her father, her grief at his loss, into something sordid, something shameful? But then, wasn't that what men like Luther did best? Took the purest things, the most beautiful, and perverted them. Corrupted them until they were unrecognizable. Well, not this time. Not with her. Samantha drew herself up to her full height, squaring her shoulders beneath the armor of her suit. She was done cowering, done biting her tongue until it bled. This ends now. Get out, she said, voice crystalline in its coldness. Get out of my mother's house and don't come back. Because I promise you, Luther, if you do, it'll be the last mistake you ever made. Something flickered in Luther's eyes, some animal instinct warning him of the steel beneath the silk. He took a step back, gaze darting to the papers on his desk, the secrets they held. This is my house now, he snarled. Esmeralda left everything to me. You have no right, right? We have every right. Declan cut him off, implacable as stone. Samantha is Esme's blood. This will always be her home, her birthright. And I'll personally see to it that you never set foot over the threshold again. He held Luther's gaze, unwavering, unblinking. A challenge and a promise written in the language of men who settled their debts with blood and bone. For a long, taut moment, Samantha thought Luther might actually be foolish enough to push it, to lunge across the space separating them and close his hands around Declan's throat, consecrating his sins in violence. But some flicker of self-preservation must have penetrated the fog of ego and avarice. With a final venomous glare, Luther spun on his heel and stalked from the room, expensive shoes echoing like gunshots on the hardwood. Samantha held herself still until she heard the front door slam, the resounding finality of it shuddering through her like ripples in a pond. Only then did she let herself sag, all the adrenaline and rage draining out of her in a rush. Declan was there to catch her, strong arms coming around her waist, pulling her into the shelter of his chest. She turned her face into the warm cotton of his shirt, breathing in the scent of home, of safety. We're going to get him, Sammy, Declan murmured into her hair. We're going to make him pay for what he did to Esme. To your family? Family. The word echoed in Samantha's mind, a litany of loss and longing. She'd spent so many years running from the wreckage of her childhood, the tattered remnants of what should have been an unbreakable bond. But now, with Declan's arms around her and the truth within reach, she finally understood. You can't outrun your blood. Can't sever those ties, no matter how deeply they cut. Family was a scar you bore forever, a mark of survival and strength. And she would bear it proudly for her mother. For the woman who'd sacrificed everything to give her a chance at a better life. Samantha pulled back just far enough to meet Declan's gaze, her hands fisting in the fabric of his shirt. Promise me, she whispered, voice rough with unshed tears. Promise me we won't stop until he's rotting in a cell. Until the whole world knows what he did. Declan's hand cupped her cheek, calluses rasping against her skin. I, I promise, darling. We're going to follow the money, unravel every dirty deal he ever made. And when we find that last thread, his lips curved slow and dangerous. We'll yank it so hard he'll be choking on polyester in the state pen. A shudder rippled through Samantha, fierce pride and determination driving back the chill of fear. With Declan by her side, his home turf advantage and her legal prowess, they would be unstoppable. Luther Marshall wouldn't know what hit him until the cuffs snapped tight around his wrists. But first they needed leverage needed to shore up their defenses and gather their forces before they took the fight to the enemy's door. Samantha stepped out of the circle of Declan's arms, already feeling the loss of his warmth as she crossed to the desk. 
She gathered up the bank statements with shaking hands, the damning figures blurring before her eyes. We need to get these somewhere safe, she said, voice steadier than she felt. Somewhere he can't find them, Declan nodded, already reaching for his keys. I know just the place. Buddy of mine runs a hunting cabin up in the hills, off the grid. We can stash them there until we're ready to make our move. Off the grid. Away from prying eyes and wagging tongues, the small town grapevine that had had always been so eager to strangle Samantha's hopes. It sounded like heaven. Or perhaps something else. Something richer and more forbidden. The thought of being alone with Declan, no distractions or interruptions, sent a hot shiver dancing down her spine. So many years spent denying what they both wanted, what they both craved like lungs craved air. But she couldn't afford to indulge those fantasies, not now. Not when her mother's memory hung in the balance, a scale waiting to be tipped by justice or vengeance. Still, as she followed Declan out to his truck, the papers clutched to her chest like a talisman. She couldn't help but imagine what it would be like. To let herself fall into his arms, into his bed. To lose herself in the fire that had always burned between them, banked but never extinguished. Maybe when this was over, when Luther was behind bars, and her mother could finally rest in peace. Maybe then, she would find out. But first, they had a war to win. The drive into the mountains was a tense one. The winding roads and switchback turns doing little to settle Samantha's nerves. She kept expecting to see Luther's Cadillac looming in the rear view, its headlights twin accusing eyes in the gathering dusk. But the only vehicle that followed them was the sunset, painting the sky in streaks of crimson and gold. By the time they reached the cabin, a rustic structure of weathered wood and river rock nestled in a cup of pines, full dark, had fallen. Declan killed the engine, plunging them into a silence broken only by the hoot of an owl and the mournful creak of old trees. For a long moment, neither of them moved, the weight of what they were about to do settling over them like a shroud. Last chance to turn back, Declan murmured, his profile limbed in silver by the rising moon. We do this. There's no going back. No pretending it was all a mistake. Samantha's fingers tightened on the sheaf of papers, the edges biting into her palms. I'm not turning back, she said, low and fierce. I'm not letting him get away with it. With any of it. Declan's hand found hers in the darkness, squeezing once. A benediction and a promise sealed in the press of skin to skin. Then let's get to work. The cabin was small, but well-appointed, with a fieldstone fireplace and a kitchenette, stocked with non-perishables. Declan moved through the space with easy familiarity, lighting kerosene lanterns and stoking the fire to drive back the mountain chill. Samantha stood in the center of the room, suddenly uncertain. The reality of what they were doing, the risks they were taking, crashed over her in a wave of icy clarity. If they were caught, if Luther discovered what they were planning. Hey. Well, hey. Declan's hand settled on her shoulders, warm and steadying. We're going to be okay. We're going to nail this bastard to the wall. Samantha leaned back into his touch, letting his strength bleed into her. I know. I just... I can't help but think of all the times I let her down. All the years I spent running away, leaving her to fend for herself. That's not on you, Sammy. Declan's thumbs rubbed soothing circles against her collarbones. Esme knew how much you loved her. Knew you were out there making a life for yourself, a life she always wanted for you. Tears stung Samantha's eyes, blurring the dancing flames into golden smears. I should have been here. Should have seen what was happening, done something to stop it. You're here now, Declan cut in gently. You're doing something now and that's all that matters. He turned her to face him, one hand coming up to cup her cheek. In the flickering light, his eyes were molten, stripped down to their essential elements of need and hunger and something deeper, something that made Samantha's breath catch in her throat. I'm not going to let anything happen to you, Sammy. I swear it on my life. His voice was low, raw, with an emotion that snaked around her heart and squeezed. Luther can come at us with all he's got, 
but he'll have to go through me first. Samantha swallowed hard, pulse kicking in her veins. Deck. And? And that? Whatever she might have said was lost as he lowered his mouth to hers. The first hot slide of his lips, short-circuiting her brain. She gasped, and he took advantage, licking into her with a skill that sent sparks skittering down her spine. This. This. This was what she'd been missing. All those years spent chasing success in the city. This fire. This fury. This overwhelming sense of being exactly where she was meant to be. Declan walked her back until her thighs hit the edge of the narrow cot, lowering her down onto the patchwork quilt. He followed her down, bearing her into the mattress, his weight a delicious pressure against her aching flesh. I love you, he breathed against her mouth, the words a vow and a prayer. I've always loved you, Sammy. Only ever you. Tears spilled over, tracking hot down her temples to dampen the pillow. I love you too, Deck Dottie. So much. They came together in a tangle of limbs and sighs, clothing shed with fumbling haste. Declan's hands mapped her body, tracing every curve and hollow, igniting nerve endings she'd forgotten she possessed. When he finally sank into her, thick and heavy and perfect, Samantha arched to meet him, nails scrabbling at his shoulders. They moved in perfect sync, give and take, push and pull, a dance older than time itself. Release, when it came, was shattering. Samantha shook apart in Declan's arms, his name a hoarse cry torn from her throat. He followed her over, pulsing deep, a groan muffled against the sweat-slick curve of her neck. In the aftermath, they lay twined together, heartbeats slowing in tandem. Samantha pillowed her head on Declan's chest, listening to the steady thump of his heart an echo of her own. We're going to make it through this, he murmured, fingers combing through her tangled hair. We're going to get justice for Esme. For your whole family. Family. There was that word again, a siren song calling her home. Samantha closed her eyes, breathing in the scent of wood smoke and sweat, and something uniquely Declan. Our family, she whispered. Because that's what he was, what he'd always been. Her lodestone, her touchstone, her true north. The piece of herself she hadn't even known was missing until he'd filled the space. Come what may, they would face it together. Unbreakable, unshakable, bound by a love that had weathered years and distance and the worst the world had to offer. Samantha let that love wash over her, a balm to soothe the ragged edges of her grief. In Declan's arms, she was safe. Cherished. I'm done. They spent the night wrapped in each other, losing themselves in pleasure again and again. But with the first pale fingers of dawn came the return of grim purpose. Samantha slipped from the cot, leaving Declan sleeping. She padded on silent feet to the desk where they'd left the bank statements, the stark figures seeming to writhe in the guttering lantern light like snakes waiting to strike. They had the proof of Luther's embezzlement, his financial misdeeds but they needed more. Something to directly tie him to Esmeralda's death, to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that he'd snuffed out her light. Blood rushing in her ears, Samantha sifted through the papers, searching for any overlooked detail, any scrap of information that might point the way. Dates, times, names of offshore banks, it was all there, laid out in neat black and white. And then sandwiched between two crisply folded statements, she found it. A name, achingly familiar, followed by a cryptic note. Miranda Larson, full service as discussed. Miranda Larson, Esmeralda's best friend since childhood, her confidante and keeper of secrets. The woman who'd been suspiciously absent from the funeral, from the suffocating tide of shared grief. A full service, rendered just days before Esmeralda's death. Dread settled like an icy fist in Samantha's gut. Oh, God, Mom, she whispered. What did you get mixed up in? Her mind raced, a dizzying whirl of possibilities. Had Miranda betrayed Esmeralda, selling her secrets to Luther in exchange for payment? Or had she been collateral damage, another obstacle in his path, ruthlessly removed? They needed answers. 
needed to find Miranda before Luther realized they were closing in. Samantha dressed quickly, tucking the papers into her purse. She scrawled a hasty note for Declan, leaving it propped against the lantern. Following a lead. Back soon. Love? S. Then, heart in her throat, she slipped into the creeping dawn light, determined to unravel the mystery that had ensnared them all. The Larson place was a ramshackle farmhouse on the outskirts of town, clad in peeling white paint and surrounded by scrubby fields gone to seed. As Samantha pulled up the gravel drive, memory tugged at her, a bittersweet twinge in the vicinity of her heart. She'd spent countless summer days here as a child, playing hide-and-seek in the towering rows of corn, sipping lemonade on the sagging front porch. Miranda had been like a second mother, quick with a hug and a conspiratorial wink. Hard to reconcile that sun-drenched image with the faded husk of a house before her now. Hard to imagine what could have driven Miranda, so steadfast and true, to betray her closest friend. Gravel crunched beneath Samantha's feet as she climbed the porch steps, rotted wood, groaning, a warning. She hesitated before the screen door, fist poised to knock, some primal instinct raising the hairs on the back of her neck. The house was silent, curtains drawn against the brightening day. No sign of movement, no indication that anyone was home. But Samantha knew with a bone-deep certainty that she wasn't alone. Taking a steadying breath, she pushed open the door, wincing as rusted hinges screamed a protest. The smell hit her first, a metallic tang that coated the back of her throat and made her gorge rise. Blood, blood, old and thick and cloying, an inescapable miasma. Miranda? Samantha called, voice cracking on the syllables. It's Sammy Ray. Are you here? Silence, broken only by the labored thud of her own heart. She forced herself forward into the gloom of the unlit house. The scent grew stronger with each step, dragging at her like grasping hands. The hallway seemed to stretch endlessly, a tunnel narrowing to a pinprick of light. Old family photos watched from the walls, faces bleached and accusing in the murk. Samantha's hand found the doorknob to the living room, clammy against her palm. She turned it slowly. Dread a leaden weight in her belly and stepped into a scene from her darkest nightmares. Miranda lay sprawled on the faded rug, sightless eyes fixed on the ceiling. Her throat gaped obscenely, ragged flesh painted in arterial crimson. Blood pooled beneath her, soaking into the carpet, a macabre ink blot. Bile seared the back of Samantha's throat as she stumbled back, hand flying to her mouth. Too late. Far too late to do anything but bear witness to the violent end of a life cut brutally short. Tears blurred her vision, flowing hot and fast down her cheeks. Oh, God, Miranda. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. This was her fault. She dragged Miranda into this by digging into the past, by stirring up secrets long buried. Luther must have discovered Miranda's involvement, must have decided she was a loose end to tie off before it could unravel him. Guilt and grief warred in Samantha's chest, twisting like vipers. But beneath it simmered a rage hotter than hellfire. A need for vengeance, for justice, that scorched through her veins and turned her bones to steel. No more. No more death, no more loss, no more lives shattered on the altar of one man's greed and malice. It ended here. It ended now. Vision tunneling, Samantha spun on her heel and fled the house of horrors, nearly tripping down the sagging steps. She fumbled for her phone with numb fingers, hitting the first number on her speed dial. Declan, she choked out when he picked up on the first ring, voice gravelly with sleep and fear. Sammy? What's wrong? Where are you? Miranda Larson is dead. The words tasted of ash on her tongue. Luther got to her. He murdered her. Death just like mom. Silence hummed across the line, a shared agony too deep for words. Then Declan's voice, low and infinitely tender. Where are you, baby? I'm coming to get you now. Samantha closed her eyes, the world spinning madly behind her lids. I'm at Miranda's place. But, Deck, we have to end this. Have to stop him before he hurts anyone else. 
We will. I promise you, Sammy, he's going to pay. Rage vibrated beneath the words, a match for her own fury. But I need you to stay put, okay? Wait for me. Please. Every instinct screamed at Samantha to go, to move, to hunt Luther down like the rabid dog he was. But she knew Declan was right. Knew she needed him by her side for this final reckoning. Okay, she whispered. Okay, I'll wait. Just hurry, Deck. Hurry. Ugh. She ended the call and slumped back against the porch railing, suddenly boneless. The morning sun beat down, incongruously cheerful, a mockery of the horror that lay behind her. The rumble of an engine shook her from her dark reverie, Declan's truck kicking up dust as it barreled down the drive. He was out before it fully stopped, long legs eating up the distance between them. Sammy. Her name on his lips was a prayer and a plea, his arms coming around her like bands of steel. Thank God. When you called, I thought... He trailed off, but Samantha heard the unspoken words. Thought I'd lost you. Thought he'd gotten to you, too. I'm here, she murmured into the broad plane of his chest. I'm okay. But it was a lie, and they both knew it. She wouldn't be okay, not until this was finished. Not until her ghosts could rest. Declan pulled back, hands framing her face, thumbs sweeping away the tears she hadn't realized were falling. We need to call the sheriff. Report what's happened. Samantha shook her head, panic clawing at her throat. No, da. No cops. Not yet. The one? Even dear. Damsel, when do? Luther has this whole town in his pocket, Deck Dye. You know that. Her fingers curled into his shirt, holding fast. The second we bring the law in, he'll get wind of it. He'll destroy evidence call in favors, spin it so we're the ones looking guilty. Declan's jaw clenched, a muscle ticking beneath the weathered bronze of his skin. So, what do we do? We can't just let him get away with this. We won't. Resolve crystallized in Samantha's gut, sharp and bright as a diamond. But we have to be smart. Have to beat him at his own game. A slow smile curved Declan's mouth, fierce and feral. Knew there was a reason I loved you, Sammy Ray. Always were the brains of this operation. Despite everything, a laugh bubbled up Samantha's throat, rusty and cracked, but real. Declan always could make her smile, even in the darkest of times. She rose up on her toes, fitting her mouth to his in a kiss that tasted of salt and promise. I love you too, Declan Hawthorne. More than anything in this world, he leaned his forehead against hers, breathing her in. Then let's finish this. Together. They took a winding route back into town, sticking to back roads and shady hollows. Samantha kept watch out the passenger window, half expecting to see Luther's dark sedan materialize behind them like a specter. But the road remained clear, the day sliding into a balmy afternoon. It felt wrong somehow, the world turning on as if nothing had changed, when Samantha's entire existence had tilted on its axis. Declan pulled into the alley behind the old feed store, killing the engine. He turned to her, eyes, serious. What's the plan, Sammy? How do we get this bastard? Samantha took a deep breath, ordering her thoughts. We need leverage. Something to hold over his head, make him confess. The bank statements, Declan said slowly. They prove he was stealing from your mama, bleeding her dry. Samantha shook her head. It's a start, but embezzlement is a far cry from murder. We need something more concrete. Something he can't wriggle out of. An idea sparked, nebulous at first, but taking swift shape. His office. At the real estate firm. If he's hiding anything, that's where it would be. Declan's brow furrowed. Sammy... We can't just break in there in broad daylight light. We don't have to. Excitement thrummed through her, electric and vital. I have a key. Mom gave it to me years ago, in case of emergencies. She'd never used it, never had cause to venture into Luther's lair. But she'd kept it all this time, a talisman against the dark. A reminder that Esmeralda trusted her, even when she didn't trust herself. Okay. Declan blew out a breath. 
Okay, so we search his office. Find something to nail him with. Then what? Samantha's smile was a knife's edge, sharp and ruthless. Then we make him an offer he can't refuse. The offices of Marshall Realty were dark and silent, closed for the day in observance of Esmeralda's passing. Samantha's key turned smoothly in the lock, admitting them into a tomb of dark wood and rich leather. Luther's private domain was as she remembered, all sleek lines and understated opulence. The massive desk dominated the space, blotter bare but for a silver pen stand and a framed photo of him and Esmeralda on their wedding day. Samantha paused before it, throat tight. Her mother smiled out at her, radiant in white lace. But it was a brittle thing. A fractured facade, cracks already spider webbing beneath the surface. How had she not seen it? The sadness, the resignation, the slow leeching of light from Esmeralda's eyes? She'd been so consumed by her own pain, her own selfish need to escape, that she'd left her mother to fade like a flower in the shade. I'm sorry, Mama, Samantha whispered, fingers trembling as she touched the cool glass. I'm so sorry I wasn't there. But I'm here now. And I'm going to make this right. Declan's hand settled on her shoulder, warm and steadying. We both will, Sammy. For Esme. Samantha nodded, blinking back the sting of tears. She turned to the desk, running her hands along the polished expanse. If I know Lutha, he'll have a hidden compartment. A safe place for all his dirty secrets. They searched in silence, combing through drawers and filing cabinets, tapping on wood panels for the telltale hollow of a concealed space. Minutes ticked by, desperation mounting with each dead end. And then, wedged in the very back of the bottom drawer, Samantha's questing fingers found a small metal box. Her heart leaped into her throat as she drew it out, the lock clicking open beneath Declan's deft touch. Inside, a stack of papers. The top sheet bore a distinctive letterhead, an insignia that seared itself into Samantha's brain. Hawking and Sons Investigative Services. With shaking hands, she spread the pages across the desk, scanning the dense text. Fragments leaped out at her, damning in their clinical detail. Subject, observed, entering Larson residence. Meetings between subject and person of interest. See file hash 1082. Photographic evidence of intimate encounter. By La Rosa in Samantha's throat as the pieces fell into sickening place. Luther hadn't just been stealing from Esmeralda. He'd been having her followed, her every move tracked and cataloged, like a bug under glass. And Miranda, God, Miranda, the person of interest, lured into a trap of Luther's making. He must have discovered her role in helping Esmeralda, in planning her escape. Must have decided she needed to be silenced permanently. That fucking bastard, Declan breathed, horror and fury warring in his voice. He was spying on her. On both of them. Samantha could only nod, mute with shock and revulsion. The invasion, the calculated cruelty of it, stole the breath from her lungs. But beneath the numbness, rage kindled. Cold and implacable, an icy flame that seared through her veins and turned her heart to stone. He'd thought himself so clever, so untouchable. Thought he could play God with their lives, mold them like clay to suit his twisted whims. No more. Samantha gathered up the papers with steady hands, the tremors of shock and grief subsumed by newfound purpose. We have him, Dacaday. We have him dead to rights. Declan met her gaze, eyes blazing with mirrored conviction. Damn straight we do. Let's go find the son of a bitch and wring a confession out of him. They found him at Esmeralda's grave. He knelt before the freshly turned earth, head bowed in a grotesque pantomime of grief. For a moment, Samantha could only stare, white-hot hatred scouring her raw. How dare he? How dare he play act the mourning husband, the bereaved patriarch, when his hands were stained with her mother's blood? When he'd orchestrated all their suffering, a maestro of malice and deceit. Luther. Her voice cracked out like a whip, shattering the sepulchral hush. He rose slowly, brushing loam from his immaculately creased trousers. When he turned to face her, his expression was a mask of paternal concern. Samantha, 
Dot, dot. I didn't expect to see you here. His gaze flicked to Declan, hardening imperceptibly. I suppose it was too much to hope that you'd have the decency to let your mother rest in peace. Red washed across Samantha's vision, a mist of blood and fury. Decency? You wouldn't know decency if it bit you in the ass, you lying, thieving snake. Luther's mouth thinned, a nerve ticking in his clenched jaw. I understand you're distraught, Samantha. Lashing out in your grief. But I won't stand here and listen to baselessness. Enough. Declan stepped forward, a coiled menace in every line of his body. We know what you did, Marshal. We have proof. Proof you killed Esme and Miranda Larson. Luther blanched, sickly pallor spreading beneath his fading tanned. But he rallied swiftly, drawing himself up with a fronted hauteur. I know what you're talking about, he blustered. Miranda's death was a tragedy, but I had nothing to do with with. You had her killed. Samantha cut across him, voice leached of mercy, of doubt. Just like you had my mother killed. Because they knew the truth. Knew what a monster you really are. With deliberate precision, she drew the sheaf of papers from her bag. Luther's eyes widened as she brandished them, realization and dread mingling on his blunt features. You've been a busy boy, Luther. Samantha smiled, and it was a terrible thing, edged in broken glass and razor wire. Spying on your wife, strong-arming her best friend, siphoning off her life's work to line your own pockets. And when she finally found the courage to leave you, she took a step forward, then another, backing him toward the lip of the grave. Luther stumbled, fear fracturing his facade. Samantha, please. You don't understand. I understand perfectly. Her voice was a sibilant hiss, a lash of cobra venom. You couldn't stand the thought of losing control, of being bested by the women you saw as chattel. So you removed them from the equation. Permanently. Luther's back hit the granite headstone, nowhere left to run. His hands rose in supplication, sweat beating his upper lip. It wasn't like that. I loved your mother. Everything I did, I did for our family. Liar. The word burst from Samantha in an agonized howl, tears scalding her cheeks. You never loved her. Never loved any of us. We were just possessions to you, trinkets to hoard and discard at your whim. Declan loomed at her side, fists clenched and shaking with the need to strike, to punish, to make Luther bleed as they had bled. Give me one reason, he snarled, a leashed animal craving an excuse to slip the chain. One reason I shouldn't beat you to a pulp and leave you to rot in this fucking hole. Panic widened Luther's eyes, darting between the two figures hemming him in. I, I've money, he stammered, grasping at straws. More money than you can imagine. I'll give you anything, do anything. Just let me go, and I swear it's yours. All of it. Samantha just looked at him wondering how she had ever been frightened of this pathetic creature. This small, grasping man with his delusions of grandeur, his grotesque hunger for power and dominion. You poor, deluded bastard, she whispered. You still think there's a way out of this? With a flick of her wrist, she cast the papers to the wind, letting them scatter over the mounded earth of her mother's grave. There's no deal to be made. No bargain that will save you now. Luther made a wordless sound, a moan of dawning horror. He lurched forward, hands clawing for the damning sheets, but Declan caught him by the collar, wrenching him back. Ah, uh, ah, uh, not so fast. You're going to give us the truth, Luther. The whole bloody truth, start to finish. Cold steel pressed against the soft flesh beneath Luther's jaw. The muzzle of the gun Samantha hadn't seen Declan draw. And if you even think about lying... He let the implication hang, dark and heavy. Luther sagged in Declan's grip, all fight draining from him in a rush. When he spoke, his voice was a thready whisper, thin and defeated. I never meant for it to go this far, he croaked. Esme, she was supposed to fall in line. To play the dutiful wife and let me handle the money, the business. But she just wouldn't listen. Samantha closed her eyes against a surge of pain, of remembrance. 
her vibrant, beautiful mother caged and suffocating in this farce of a marriage. So you decided to get rid of her. Declan's voice was flat, devoid of inflection. Snuff out her light because you couldn't control it. Luther shook his head wildly, Adam's apple bobbing against the gun barrel. No. No, I didn't. I never laid a hand on her, I swear it. But you had someone else do it, Samantha guessed, pieces slotting into lethal place. Someone from that detective agency you hired. They made it look like an accident and you got to play the grieving widower. A sob tore from Luther's throat, a pathetic, mewling thing. I didn't know they would, I thought they would just scare her. Rough her up a bit, make her think twice about leaving. Disgust roiled in Samantha's gut, visceral and scorching. And Miranda, was she just collateral damage in your sick little game? Luther squeezed his eyes shut, tears leaking from beneath the lids. She knew too much. Only meeting with a detective. I couldn't risk her telling Esme, telling anyone. I had to, to, to murder her. Declan's finger whitened on the trigger, a hair's breadth from squeezing. You filthy, evil son of Abich. I should splatter your brains across this grass and let the worms eat what's left. Do it, do it. Samantha's voice rang out, cold and clear as a death knell. Luther's eyes flew open, bulging with terror, as they fixed on her. Do it, Declan. Finish this. For a long, taut moment, no one moved. No one so much as breathed. The world narrowed to the three of them, locked in a dance of hatred and retribution. Then slowly, Declan lowered the gun, shoved Luther away from him in disgust, sending the man sprawling across the grave. No, he said. Quiet, but certain. No, Sammy. That's too easy. Too clean. He turned to her, grim resolve etched into every line of his feral face. I want him to suffer. I want him to pay for what he did every day for the rest of his miserable life. Understanding unfolded in Samantha's breast, cold and terrible. He was right. Death was too swift, too merciful. Luther needed to feel every iota of the pain he had wrought, the lives he had shattered. And she knew just how to begin his penance. Get up, she ordered, ice cracking through the words. Get up. You pathetic worm. Mewling, Luther struggled to his feet, hands held out in desperate supplication. Samantha, please, have mercy. I'm begging you. Mercy? A jagged laugh tore from her throat, tasting of blood and ashes. You, who never showed a shred of mercy to the women you were supposed to cherish and protect. No, Luther, you deserve no mercy. No clemency. She reached into her bag, fingers closing around the cool plastic of her phone. But you will have justice. The justice of the law you thought yourself above. With deliberate strokes, she dialed a number she knew by heart. The one she'd studiously avoided all these years. A bitter reminder of the past she'd fled. Sheriff Harding? It's Samantha Ray. Her voice was steady the lying, the riot of emotions churning in her chest. I'm at Cypress Hill Cemetery. I need you to come right away. And bring deputies. We've apprehended a murderer. Luther's face drained of blood, sickly and gray in the dying light. Samantha, no. You can't. I'll be ruined. My reputation won. Hang your reputation. Declan roared, a volcano of long-suppressed rage erupting. Hang your blasted money and power! You're going to rot in a cell for what you've done, and the whole world will know exactly what kind of a monster you are. Samantha let the words wash over her, cleansing in their ferocity. This was real justice, more fitting than a bullet to the brain. Luther would be stripped of all his ill-gotten gains, all the status and influence he'd so jealously guarded and he would live every day with the knowledge that it was Esmeralda's daughter who had brought him low. The girl he'd underestimated, belittled, tried to break beneath his heel. She could already hear the sirens wailing in the distance, heralding an end and a beginning. Tight-lipped, 
she shoved Luther to his knees, unmoved by his babbled pleas and promises. They had all the evidence they needed. The bank statements, the surveillance records, Luther's own blubbered confession. He would never see the outside of a prison wall again. This is for Miranda. She stared down at him, eyes fracturing emerald. For my mother. For every woman whose light you tried to smother. And as the squad cars screeched to a halt, disgorging officers with guns drawn and faces grim, Samantha finally let herself shatter. Great, racking sobs tore through her, years of pent-up anguish and fury pouring out in a torrent. Declan's arms came around her, holding her up, holding her together. It's over, baby, he crooned into her hair, his own tears mingling with hers. It's done. You did it. As if from underwater, she watched Sheriff Harding wrestle a limp, unresisting Luther into cuffs, snarling the Miranda rights with vengeful relish. Watched as he was stuffed into the back of a cruiser, a broken puppet with his strings cut. It was over. The nightmare had ended. And from its ashes, hope kindled. Samantha leaned into Declan's strength, feeling the steady drum of his heart against her cheek. They had lost so much, sacrificed so much to bring them to this moment. But they had endured. They had triumphed. And in the warmth of his embrace, in the whispered vow of his love, she knew they would heal. Knew that Esmeralda's legacy would live on, untarnished and unbroken. Slowly, arm in arm, they walked away from the grave, away from the specter of death and deceit. The future stretched before them, golden and limitless. And though the road would be long, the scars indelible, Samantha knew they would walk it together. A united front. A family, bound by blood and pain and unshakable love. In the end, that was Esmeralda's true gift. The strength to stand tall. To seek the light, even in the darkest of times. Samantha lifted her face to the sun, letting its warmth bathe her skin. Somewhere she knew, her mother was smiling. At peace, at last. The end.